Jared Lysak's motion to dismiss his case has been denied. Let's get into some details of his hearing today. Empowering True Crime Alex here, and I cover everything true crime. I'm really passionate about DV and SA in particular, mostly young women, women's cases, and today happens to be International Women's Day. So it is a really great day that this case has not been dismissed because many millions of women never get justice for R. And in this case, it's a very pretty old case. And so we really want to see justice for the alleged victim. So for quick synopsis, Jared Lysick, who is the founder of AWP, AWP has done is an underwater search dive and search team. They recovered Kylie Rodney. That's probably the biggest case that they've worked on. That was last year in the uh, late summer. And they've recovered I don't know, dozens of, of, uh, of, of missing persons, vehicles, and they had great news, great, 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 um, just a lot of great stuff that they were doing. Well, last year, Jared Lysick, the founder, was accused of, of, of R, of his cousin, and it would happened approximately 30 years ago, so in 1992, when the victim would have been 10 years old and Jared would have been 16 or 17, depending. There were actually two charges, so two specific incidents. One was at the beginning of the year, one was toward the end of the year, and Jared's birthday is in September. And so his birthday would have been 16 or, or he would have been 16 or 17. What's happening? Um, he has a defense attorney and his defense attorney put a motion to dismiss the case. And it's been going around the interwebs that probably there was going to be potentially, a, you know, a dismissal because of statute limitations and different, um, for example, um, because the statute of limitations was changed after the alleged incident, then that could be cause for dismissal. Well, <laughs> that was one of the arguments today. And there was some really interesting news that came out of this. So let's get into just some quick logistics on what happened in the in the uh, court. So this was available. It was oral arguments between the defense and the prosecution via WebEx. And so they actually had a hearing online. We were able to participate um, but no, uh, you couldn't unmute. It was really well organized. You couldn't see who any of the other participants were. All you could see was that uh, that Mandy Larson, the judge, was there. The prosecution and the defense attorney and Jared L Lysick was there. Those are the only four panels you could see on the grid. And so I couldn't see. I had no idea how many other attendees were uh, were attending. And so one of the things that um, and the prosecution is the prosecutor is is Eric Butler and the defense attorney is Randall Richards. And so the defense started with his arguments and the, the, the defense attorney, the first argument was about the statute of limitations. Now he argued that something having to do with changing the statute of limitations prior to 1995 and the incident, alleged incident would have happened in 1992 so, yes, yeah, so that was the first thing. And um, I'm going to give you the arguments and then I'm going to the arguments from the defendant or defense attorney. And then I'm going to give you the prosecution's rebuttals. He's saying that the incident, uh, the story has changed and that um, the story from the victim has changed and that the client wasn't in Utah on those dates. And uh, and that he received six sworn statements that state that he wasn't, uh, that Jared Lysick wasn't there on those dates that were alleged by the victim. So that was the first argument that he had. The second argument is that if there is this evidence that um, is extremely important, there is a, um, you know, a law on destruction of evidence. And so what he said is that so this case happened over 30 years ago, and he's going back trying to find evidence to be able to defend his client, and he has he can't he can't get it. So one example, and I guess the, the, the destruction of evidence he's calling a due process violation, and therefore the case should be dismissed. 
So one of the things that he's saying is he says there's prejudice to his client. The prejudice to his client is extreme. And that as an example, he's saying that the alleged dates of the incident, he supposedly stole, it sounded like a family vehicle, but it might have been somebody else's vehicle, and um, and took they took it on a joyride. And so the, 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 the attorney is saying that the dates don't match up because the date of the joyride occurred in the 80s and this incident occurred in 1992. And so the dates don't match up. And um, and so they he isn't able to get information from the juvenile court system. So his defense is, hey, my my client wasn't juvie at the time. And because he was, uh, the court records are only available for another 10 years after the person turns 18. So I guess when he turned 8, 28, the, the records were, um, were deleted. Uh, that because he can't get access, he can't get access to those records to, in, to determine whether in fact he was in court or in, in juvie at that time. He's saying that's that's some evidence that's been disrupted, right? So that's that's prejudice against his client. Um, other things that he's using as examples are car registrations that have been thrown away, school records that are difficult to get. And he's saying he wasn't he wasn't blaming the state. He's just saying that these are some things based on the passage of time that court records aren't available any longer in certain cases, registrations and other other government records aren't available. And so his he's citing the destruction of evidence, due process violation, that it should be dismissed. And then the third argument that he made was related to consent. And he said that the that the victim said that that uh, that Jared used fear and bribes to have sex with him. And um, so his argument was he used he he had a case that he apparently was a, a lawyer for and one where somebody under 14 can consent with some with another person under 14. And um, his, their position is that Jared was under 14. So he's saying that it shouldn't even be, um, a, it shouldn't even matter at this point, I guess, because the, in, the, in the particular case, the two people, one was 13 and one was 12. Um, but he's saying they were, they were under 14 and they can consent with someone who's under 14. So those were the three arguments that the defense attorney made. The prosecution, Eric Butler, he rebutted and said that, um, you know, that he's putting the cart before the horse here. He's trying to dismiss the case when they haven't even gone to pretrial, right? And um, they haven't even had any preliminary hearing. So why is they trying to dismiss the case on, on evidence when they're not even, they haven't even put forth any evidence yet? And he's saying um, that the jury will find if and when a crime occurred. And that's not the, def that's not the attorney's job. It's the jury's job. And, um, and actually, so on the, on the matter of the statute of limitations, he says that the, that the attorney is actually, there's a defect in information. Um, it's called ex post facto, by the way, disclaimer, I am not an attorney. <laughs> and so if I get anything wrong, if you're an attorney, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I totally allow it. And, and as always, I'd appreciate if you follow, subscribe to my channel for um, the latest breaking news. Um, we're, you know, we can dissect this together and we can um, learn and grow and advocate together for victims. All right. So, <laughs> um, so he said, actually, the, the prosecution actually set the defense attorney straight. And he said, in 1991, which was a year before the 1992 incidents allegedly occurred, it actually changed so that um, before the statute of limitations was eight years on R and, and other sexual related crimes. And, um, and what ended up happening is that they changed it so that they, instead of it being eight years, now you have four years to pro to go to prosecute a crime after the person uh, reports the crime. And so that was an interesting inter uh, uh, distinction there. On the issue of evidence, which was the second argument that the, uh, that the attorney made, you know, he's saying that, um, that court records being destroyed because he's going joyriding. I mean, 
that that might be something that they could find, you know, that the burden of the proof, the burden of evidence is on the state. So the state has to come up with the evidence to prove that the incident occurred. To dismiss a case based on there being lack of evidence for the defendant doesn't make sense because again, the defendant doesn't have to prove that they didn't do it. The defendant, the, the state has to prove that he did it, right? That there has to be enough evidence that he did it. So it's really the burden of, of evidence is on the state. Um, and it's not unfair to the defendant that he doesn't have these court records from when he was in juvenile, when he was joyriding, allegedly, you know? <laughs> um, so then the third argument that he made around consent is that the, the, the trial that he, that the defense attorney apparently won, uh, was a 13-year-old having sex with a 12-year-old. And um, in this case, the, uh, Jared was not under 14. Jared was either 16 or 17 having sex with a 10-year-old. And, um, and also she has alleged, and he read, he read the, the accounts of the victim, that she alleged all along it was not consensual. So the matter of consent it shouldn't even be brought up because not only was she 10, but she alleged it was not consensual. Okay, so then the defense rebutted and um, he once again reiterated that this occurred. He keeps saying that their position is that the incident occurred at a time when they when Jared was having a joyriding event, you know, when he was a, a when he was a young guy. Um, side note, you know, anyone who makes it sound like Jared Pat Lysak shouldn't, you know, that that um that they, they've done so much good with AWP and this is just one incident from 30 years ago, has to remember that Jared Lysak has been, so this is what I didn't even know about this, this youth incident. He has gone to jail. He's been prosecuted lots of times. He's been charged lots of times from various different things. I didn't even know about this joyriding event. He's been He's been caught stealing. He had a thing with the SEC uh, for fraud related to, to, to trading and so many other incidents. And so this is not a singular, this is not golden boy who had this one incident that happened, you know, gone astray when he was a kid. No, he, this is a repeat offender of various different crimes. So just had to make that side note right there. Their position, once again, is that, you know, that he was a child, that it occurred during this joyriding event. And, you know, he just was very um, sticking to that. The prosecution, again, rebutted and said that, um, that because of this whole idea of the passage of time and lack of evidence, shouldn't dismiss the case. Okay, so the judge, Judge Larson, listened to both sides. And um, this was her judge, her judgment. This was the conclusion. The first one, as far as the statute of limitations, she said, reminded that the statute of limitations changed in 1991. And as stated earlier, that the eight, it was originally eight years and that was replaced to, it had to be, a, it, the statute of limitations was now four years as of the reporting of the case. Because this was reported in 2022, and by the way, these are, these types of cases, like, like child R, okay? Um, so be, because this was reported in 2022, it has not run in this case. And so she denied the ex post facto law. So that whole statute of limitations that is, is out. So that, um, that's been denied. So she brought up the, the, the discussion about the evidence and um, how the importance of the evidence. And she said some of the, the case law that was, that was brought up, she said wasn't relevant. She said the joyriding event that happened allegedly in 1989 isn't relevant because this happened in, 19, in 1992. So this was years after that joyriding, at least as far as what was stated, the incident that occurred was in 1992. And then she also said on the issue of consent that this was a 10 year old. And so a 10 year old, cannot consent. And so she denied the motion to dismiss the case. And so that was done. So no, the case will continue. And they said a preliminary hearing had been scheduled for April 5th. It will be held in person at 3 p.m. Utah time. 
and uh, there will be no WebEx because it will be in person. So, uh, so we won't be able to participate. And, um, you know, and that'll give sufficient time for everyone to make proper arrangements to travel there because it will be in person. And one last thing that she mentioned, she actually said the judge actually brought up that, um, and I have to confirm this, but this is what I heard, that uh, that sentencing would be as a minor because he was, uh, because he is being, because he was a minor, that the sentencing would be as a minor. And I guess that's the state law there that um, he can't be tried as an adult. So he would be tried, he would be a minor. Um, and so any sentencing would be as a minor. And I thought that was very interesting as well, because I kind of assumed that the big deal here is because of the age that it's so close to adult age that he would be tried as an adult. So I thought that was really interesting that she brought that up. It hadn't even been argued, I guess. And, um, and actually she said it hadn't been argued that uh, today. So yes, um, so it's a good day, you know, we're gonna try, we're, they're gonna see this through. The prosecution said, listen, the, the, the burden of finding the evidence is on us, not you guys, right? So if there's not a sufficient evidence for a jury to believe that there is, um, you know, that there's, that, that there's a conviction, then it's not gonna go through, right? There's gonna be a not guilty verdict. And so I thought that was really interesting. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know if you're if you're happy, if you're surprised, if you, you know, well, I'd love to hear what you think. And uh, let me know down in the, the comments. And uh, yes, and so we'll, um, we'll keep you, I'll keep you posted if there's anything happening between now and April 5th, or if there's any change of dates, I'll let you know as well. Happy International Women's Day once again. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up, share, and of course, leave your thoughts in the comments. And if you like my style of covering true crime, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel so that you're up to date on all the latest breaking news in true crime cases. And in this case, the Jared Lysak case as well. Stay safe, stay thriving, keep it empowering, and have an amazing week. Bye for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. Thank you.